Hey guys, Dar Sebius here with another Sebius Speaks, and today I'm talking books, and specifically The End Times Book 1, Nagash. Oh my word. So, I haven't really played fantasy since I was tiny, and then only played a few games, um, more kind of 40k minded, but I've always loved the armies, loved the lore, loved the fluff and the old world and all that good stuff and I'm very excited, even more excited after getting my hands on this um, for the ninth edition and finally getting back into some fantasy goodness because this has blown my mind. Okay, I, yeah, I'm sorry if I become indecipherable and start speaking in ancient Khmeri text uh, text uh, language on just yeah if the de dead rays behind me or I uh, yeah because that's how excited and ridiculous I feel and I am about this goodness so um, the other weekend we went to stay with Sarah's folks and luckily her brother had a copy of the sexy sexy book we're talking about which is now sold out which is really sad times um, I don't know if they're going to be bringing, selling it again at any point, uh, but we know there are more books to come, and hopefully there are going to be more just beautiful ridiculousness as there are. So let's little, have a little look and talk about some of these things. So what you got with the kind of fifty pound package is this: the this here is the uh, the fluff book, um, the end times, the gash book one, uh, the front cover and back cover with lovely art there. Uh, that's like a 297 uh, odd, uh, nearly 300 pages of pure joy and fluff and art and battles and goodness and just, oh, I don't even know where to start or where to finish. It's just so bloody good. <laughs> um, and also you get the army book, uh, which can be seen here. Uh, the front and back with Nagash, his huge new epic model uh, with the spirits and the books and the gash all around him uh, on the front and on the back you've got that nice epic uh, battle scene with the Fargeist um, around him and all that good stuff going on there so um, I'll talk a little bit about the army book um, and then a little bit more about the, the, the fluff book itself so the army book is kind of awesome um, I'm not huge on Warhammer Fantasy rules so you have to bear with me I'm just going to go a quick kind of overview um, but you got special rules for fighting uh, if the dark, darkest depths, which is the subterranean uh, fighting, so to sort of recreate um, caves and uh, skaven lairs and things like that. And they've got all sorts of crazy um, things for pitfalls and falling stalagmites and trolls and cave squigs and all sorts of things that could be in there um, to add more kind of depth and craziness to battle. Um, you've also got haunted battlegrounds, um, which are going to kind of obviously give some kind of advantage to the uh, necromancers and, and undead to a certain extent um, but again these are for to help you recreate battles and moments from the epic uh, end times that are cometh and are upon us um, as they are you've also got new scenery uh, you've got haunted forests and haunted gardens of moor um, again they're going to have having more crazy effects for the undead and things going on there but the entire lore of undeath which is just incredible. Um, lots of different uh, things for summoning, uh, all sorts of crazy things, um, and, well, undead things, um, vampiric things as well, um, and also damaging spells. Um, you've also got um, Kandarak the Harborer, which is, you can summon a 65 point character or up to 200 points of anything else. Which I believe when Nagash himself, he triples things. So it can get crazy. But Nagash himself is a, a thousand points drop. <laughs> so he is kind of huge, but he is literally huge as well. It's a beautiful thing. Um, and I showed the army book, but there, let's have another little look at it again because you can see him on the cover there looking awesome as he does. Um, other things you've got, there's new um, rules for some for the kind of the state of how things are because the way of magic has changed to a certain extent for, especially for necromancy um, and things with that you've got army list you've got the Nagash host and rules uh, for, for him and you know, you've got Manfred von Karsten you've got Vlad von Karsten 
you've got the Mog Heist, uh, you've got um, Valf, the Herald of Sigma, you've got Krom the Conqueror, uh, who's something I want to touch on, I really would like to find out more about Krom, because Krom seems rather awesome. He is an epic uh, chaos champion who was kind of going around slaughtering, doing his thing, kind of thinking he might be Archeon the Everchosen, um, but it turned out that Archeon the Everchosen was already about, and they faced off in battle, and uh, Archeon managed to basically kick his ass without even drawing his sword. And the last moment, in a very kind of Shadow of Mordor-esque way, while holding him, he was about to draw his sword and kill him, and he was actually like, hey, Krom, you're a cool Chaos Champion dude. Why don't we become Chaos Buddies and go do our thing together? And off they went. Um, so that's kind of awesome, because Chaos is awesome in its disgusting, brutal, creepy coolness. But I like the joy and the kind of, yay, Chaos Buddies is always awesome. <laughs> the Chaos Brofist, what more What more can you ask uh, for? Uh, other things in the army book, you've got uh, at least... 19, I think there might even be more, and some of them are part A and part B of different battles, but, but 19 odd scenarios uh, for battles. It just goes on and on, with lots of detail and epic stuff, and it's just an awesome army book. Um, I really didn't, I really originally thought it was just going to be for Nagash and a couple of his guys, but this is the army book for this first part of the end times as well, which is so, it's an awesome thing for all Warhammer Fantasy people. And I'm sure the army book itself is still available <laughs> rather, rather than the, uh, the the package which is now gone, uh, which is sad times indeed. Um, but back to the fluff book, because that's really what I want to talk about. Uh, it's another little look at, the, look at it here. The beautiful thing. Beautiful thing. Okay. That's okay. I don't even know how to start this. Um, that does look like they're just by cutting some of the art before I even get to any other stuff. The art is insane. I just took a few pictures because I wanted to just give a little flavour of some of the unbelievable stuff we've got in here. So, we've got epic stuff with the slan going on there. We've got some epic, uh, was it Flutterance or Chaos Dudes there? All kind of matter of craziness and things going on. Chaos Warriors and Dragons and all sorts of epic just stuff there um, and here Nagash in all his glory with his Montarks just looking like a bad Mamma Jamba which is what he is he is a bad Mamma Jamba and there's just, there is so much more art there is there's just beautiful beautiful pages of art in there which is just wonderful and there's stuff depicting all the armies and everything and just various events and characters and all sorts of just sumptuous, beautiful things. Um, so if there's still some in your local uh, hobby store or games workshop, get a hold of them because it's just an amazing, amazing thing. So I actually started reading the pref preface um, and it was that that just completely blew my mind. You've got a couple of pages, a couple of epic pages uh, on kind of the, the craziness, the the good times and the bad times and the crazy times um, that have happened in the kind of the, the big, leading up to the re return of Nagash, leading up to um, Gesemanak or G Gesemanak or however you Gesemanak or however you say bad time Morshleb on the rise demon night of Halloween death is what I'm going to say. Um, you see this land kind of getting really concerned as the Skaven are really kind of forcing themselves upon them and demons that are raving. Demons are everywhere. Demons are fully on the move. Orcs, the orcs are fully mobilized. All of the orcs. All of the orcs are mobilized. Luckily not under one banner because they could destroy the world, but there are various war chiefs leading them and crazy stuff going on. Um, you've got beastmen are completely roaming the world. They're kind of being herded all across. Uh, monoliths and raising and things that they're kind of going to new kind of pastures and just just reaving and doing the things the beast men do. The Northmen are mobilizing, marching south with absolute abandon. They're marching everywhere, they're marching in the Dark Elves. Dark Elves are in disarray and not sure what's going on. At the same time, Malekith's got crazy plans and stuff that he's trying to do while sending Malice Darkblade to try and deal with the stuff that's going on on their own doorstep. The High Elves, I've no idea what, they're just crazy. 
Um, their leader's trying to find... The Phoenix King is trying to find his daughter, who's been taken by uh, Von Karstein. He's kind of locking himself away, but demons and stuff are coming up. There's rumours that, like, Olathan could eventually be just wiped out and the elves might have to find somewhere new to live. Um, just madness. Uh, all for, and you get uh, this perspective and kind of intro from every army, every faction's point of view. Um, as the, and the Twin Tail Comet is, is now flying and Moshlev is on the rise. Crazy, crazy times. The dead are walking, and not just when raised up by necromancers or tomb kings or aerophants, they are just getting up. There are spirits roaming the streets, crazy stuff. It's plague spreading out. People turning into crazy mutants and all stuff on a scale not seen before. Madness. With something wicked, this way comes. A nun, possibly my favourite thing of the entire preface. A nun who had been serving with her brothers and sisters for 20 years, suddenly, after breakfast prayers, picks up a knife and slays everyone in the convent. In the morning, where one of the, the guard at the watch comes, thinking she's comatose to come and see, she slashes his throat, steals his sword, and now has a knife and a sword, and goes on a merry kind of killing spree about the town. Madness, madness, madness. I was just reading this, just page after page after page, and it's not even mentioned the gas yet. This is just what's going on with all these people. It's just incredible. The hairs on all every part of my body, my entire beard was standing on end, like I was a goddamn slayer, and I was using pig fat to keep it up. I had geek bumps and nerdgasms, it was just a beautiful thing, and that's just the preface! It's just the preface! And some of the art, that was it. That's all. That's all, and that's already that kind of joy. And we're talking a decent thickness of joy to read. Just so much goodness. So much goodness. And then we have, oh, there's, there's maps as well, with this epic map here, We've got, there's all sorts of maps in the book as well, but we're talking about things as they go, um, so then that was just, yeah, just all sorts of joy, all sorts of joy. So we have, we have chapter one, which, which basically is Ark on the Black, getting it done. I don't really want to give spoilers, but finding various... Uh, artifacts of Nagash to get ready to bring him back because we all know that he's coming back and we all know that he is back so that's not really a spoiler. Archon is kind of yeah teaming up with vampires to do his thing to find stuff spurring dissent amongst the uh, Bretonians. Bretonians are having have already had a civil war and then get attacked again in massive uh, style. It's been rumoured for a while they may be making fluff to kind of say that Bretonia could crumble in upon itself and maybe not be around who knows? But just crazy things going on. And that's the kind of the first chapter we have Archon, yeah, getting his stuff that he needs um, to bring the gash back. And then the second chapter is the ritual itself. I didn't actually manage to get any further because I stupidly only started looking at this beauty, beautiful grimoire tome of joy uh, on the last day we were staying with um, uh, Lee, or Lagash as I'm now going to be calling him, uh, Immortus. Um, but it was so good. It was so good I had to stay up as late as I could. I had to read like 130 pay odd pages of this just joy. And it's just amazing. So we also, what else do we have? You have the, all the fluff and lead up story to each battle. And then there'll be kind of maps. Um, as we said, we've got maps here uh, of, of the kind of battle. But then you also get the disposition of the armies themselves. So, for instance, I obviously wanted to show off Nurgle and Demonish stuff here because that's what I love. We have the Rotting Horde. You get to see the, the, the greater demons, the warriors, the marauders, the beasts and the plague bearers, and specifics about them. Um, and you have this for every battle on both sides. For both sides of each conflict, you have uh, talking about the, the general, talking about the the kind of the, the troops and the cavalry and the various like motley crews that form each attacking force. There's even diagrams of the way the battle takes place. You have an entire description of the battle itself and the aftermath. It just rolls on. It's just ceaseless, fluff-tastic, lore, joy of joys. 
just nerdgasms and, and just stuff. I just, I can't. I need it. I need to get hold of it and read more because it's changed my life. I feel it was like a religious experience reading this book. Um, I really feel that I want more Warhammer Fantasy in my life now because it's epic and it's getting to a point where there is just so much happening and so much changing after such a long time of nothing changing to a certain extent there's obviously been the storm of magic and all sorts of other weird things that happened but bits of that got retconned and things didn't change as much as they thought they did um, and other stuff happened I don't know this is second hand information from people who know more about fantasy than me but it's all building. They've got the. They're most going to be a Skaven and possibly Chaos book. There's uh, there's at least three or four. There's at least another three. There'll be four books in total for this series, and hopefully they will all come with their ridiculous, epic amounts of fluff to move the story forward. And I just can't wait. Nagash is back. He's serious. He wants to close the warp gates. He wants to take out. Um, basically, the influence and power of Chaos completely, and then just control and be the master of the entire world. And the most interesting thing that it seems um, from, from the little bits I have read and I got into is that Chaos, Chaos wants to thwart him obviously because he is a threat, but Chaos is going to thwart him by helping anyone and everyone. Chaos have herded the Beastmen towards the ritual site to try and stop the ritual from happening. Um, a very posh a uh, perfumed lady met, met with one of the most prominent um, wizards for the Empire and gave him an ancient script to help him create a barrier to keep the vampires in Sylvania. In a brothel. Nothing to do with the Dark Prince, obviously. Nothing to do with the Dark Prince. Hmm. Just, wow. Just things are in motion and things are epic. It's not just like, oh, there's a Warhammer Fantasy event and it's going to change stuff and that's kind of interesting. Um, it's huge and it's incredible and I need more and I need it. And it's building to Warhammer Fantasy um, 9th edition. Now, maybe a bit Tim for hat time, but some of the people I've been talking to are sort of maybe thinking and suggesting that we're building to one huge change. Uh, to the state of Warhammer Fantasy. Possibly. Now, th this is all rumour and speculation from this point onwards. Uh, it could be that, the, so the ninth, ninth edition comes out. That could be said, this is Warhammer Fantasy. If you want to play Warhammer Fantasy, that's Warhammer Fantasy. You've got ninth edition. There you go. That's that. But things could also be moving towards. I know they used to be linked before, and they said they're not linked, they're separate. But it looks like they could even be link getting linked back into the sort of 40k universe because Nagash has said he's seen much greater power on other planets. Now, other planets have not really been a big part of Warm Fantasy in any way because they are where they are. I don't know. Nagash and Necrons, that could be interesting. That could that could be very interesting. Um, and as I just said, they were talking about monoliths coming out of the ground. Now, obviously, monoliths probably not in the context of. Necron monoliths, but still, monoliths coming out of the ground with green magic. I know that, again, is just necromantic kind of energy. But yes, um, as you can tell, I'm quite excited. I have an image of me being insanely excited reading the book here. Um, this is when Sarah walked in on me having absolute ridiculous joy with the gash. But also, we see right at the end of the book, we have what very much looks like a, a Necron monolith as a flying pyramid in the air at the end of the book. I'm not sure what the context and stuff of that is, but it's just just putting stuff out there, not saying it's gonna happen, not saying it is, just putting it out there as interesting stuff. Um, but big things are guanin, as they say. Big things, and I just can't wait to find out more, read more, and to really get back into fantasy. I know I haven't been playing much 40k recently, but that's the two things on my um, big things on my list is to get back into 40k, get back into playing that, and doing more fluff and talking about more 40k stuff. But as soon as 9th edition comes out, and I can afford it, <laughs> uh, I definitely will be getting into some more fantasy goodness and talking about more books and joy again. Let's just have one last quick look at the art again. It's so beautiful. Oh, the joy. The joy. Oh, but yes, so this has been 
Sevia Speaks, fangirling, getting insanely excited about the End Times Book 1 for Warhammer Fantasy. Uh, obviously, for Anna's Index, uh, a place for all things geeky gaming. Uh, Anna's Index.com. Uh, we've got video games, board games, card games, tabletop. All that good stuff. If you want to share stuff with us, that's also brilliant. If you want to get involved and do regular articles or videos or models or anything, um, get in touch with us. We're kind of... Our HQ is on Tumblr. Best place to get hold of us. But we're also on Facebook and Twitter and YouTube and all that good stuff. So, yeah. I think I need to go for a lie down and calm down because I've got a bit overexcited. But Nagash is back. And he's serious. And I'm Darth Sebius, and I'll catch you guys soon. Tally bye.